We are fewer than 24 hours away from Netflix's earnings. Now, shares a little bit down the last couple of days, but let's be clear, Netflix stock's been on a tear the past year, nearly doubling over that period, hitting a record just on Monday. But really, can these companies keep raising their rates? Let's talk to a guy that knows something about cable because he founded this channel. He's now a contributor here at CNBC, Tom Rogers, executive chair of Orbit Media and Entertainment, as well as the former NBC cable president, like I said, founder of CNBC. And that's why we call him the godfather, by the way. Guy calls him something else, which is very complimentary. And that's why I feel S. very old. Um, very no, old. I, I, godfather is very apropos, so it's great to have the godfather. It, it, it truly is. And you look at Netflix's numbers. Has Netflix had – I'm not the coolest guy with, with video. Has Netflix had, like, a big hit, Tom? Like, what's, what is Netflix now? What's, tell in us it, where it's history? you're going. Netflix has had a big hit in its history. Yeah. Uh, hasn't but had I mean, anything right in now. the cultural zeitgeist right now. Bridgerton, Bridgerton season three. How about Squid Game? Was big. Oh, well, Squid well, Game Squid is Game huge. Squid Game 2 coming no, out. But, yes. so of but they, they have a huge slate coming out over the next year. So it's viewed as they have some big returning shows and some big new shows. Uh, lack of original programming is not their issue. So I bring this up not to talk about what show is popular at the moment, but because you know how it works, Tom. Okay, a lot of people will. It's called churn, technically, in the industry. They people cancel. They go a few months. They hear about a show that they like or somebody else likes. They resubscribe, watch them all, right. then cancel. Yep. Does Netflix have that problem, or has Netflix become sort of the library of video for America? Well, you're pointing to a huge issue for the industry. If you look at the industry over the last quarter, I think the aggregate of all streaming services gained about 45 million net addition subs, but they churned out about 43 and a half million. Mm -hmm. Now, net Netflix, on the other hand, has the lowest churn out there. Its churn is under 2 percent. The average for the industry is about five and a half percent. So you're talking about in the course of a year, about 70 percent of subs churning out. Having said that, Netflix is, has separated itself. It is clearly the most valuable media company in the world, will continue to be the most valuable media company in the world. And it is the first true global entertainment franchise that has a global status. But that's comparing it to Disney Plus and to Hulu and to Max and to Peacock and to Paramount Plus, beginning to see it get compared to a couple others where it doesn't necessarily stack up quite that well. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube and Amazon. Uh, YouTube, but those are very different. Right. Yeah. YouTube TV is different. That's that's like a cable well, replacement. YouTube TV is streaming cable channels. Yeah. But YouTube connected TV has now surpassed Netflix regularly as the most viewed streaming service. Just YouTube. YouTube on the TV, not YouTube on your phone. Now, advertising revenue is the big thing. But when you look at YouTube, which probably on a combined basis of its uh, mobile and connected TV audience probably has something like two billion eyeballs globally. <laughs> You're talking about Netflix, by comparison, having a very nascent business of, in the U.S., I'd say something around the order of 15 million subscribers. That isn't viewers, that is subscribers. So huge difference, nascent service by comparison. Looking at Amazon, which is now the third largest advertising-based company in the world in terms of ad sales, it is aggregating all the other streaming services and channels. Netflix isn't participating, but most of the others are. Apple TV Plus, Apple just agreed to have Amazon be part, uh, let Amazon include it as part of its bundle. Amazon, in terms of data, in terms of targeting, is miles ahead where, of where Netflix is. The, the so it's got a long way to go there. Just going back to Netflix only for a minute. So we saw that sort of growth really reaccelerated when they had ad supported, which they never had, right? And then they password sharing. And is there still a lot of room left in those catalysts? Well, I think that's what everybody's looking at uh, starting tomorrow. And I, I always think Netflix trades on its subscriber numbers much more than it should because its long-term trends are really much more the story than the quarter-by-quarter -quarter subscriber fluctuation. 
Uh, it gained about 39 million subs, largely off the back of password sharing crackdown uh -huh. in the last 12 months. Um, going forward, it's not going to be looking like that. Uh, but they still have a, uh, they're getting about 45% of their new subs uh, coming from the ad tier. So the lower priced ad tier, which is the lowest price of all the streaming services on the ad tier, only $6.99, I think should serve them well in terms of sub gains.